Hey everyone, welcome along to the Canterbury Kayaking Coast to Coast Kayak Lines video for 2023. Uh, I'm your host or guide, I guess, Sam Milne. Um, and I think what better way to start than looking at the, the weather, the flows, and then we'll get into some footage of the river this year and my suggested lines for you. So switch over to my screen here and I've got a river flow gauge uh, for the Waimakariri River. This is the Odorama gauge, the one that most of us um, refer to when we're talking about the river flows. Um, so as you can see here, the river has come up a little bit. Um, today is Tuesday, February 7th, um, so only a few days until race day. And a few days ago, I was, I was pretty concerned um, that we might not get this video done. Um, you can see that we had all this uh, rain on the way and, and I was sort of um, you know, a little bit concerned that I wouldn't get good footage of what the river will be like on the day. So you can see that it's been sitting here for a long time, just over 40 cumex, which is really, really low. And then it bumped up a little bit um, February 3rd. Uh, and then this is when I decided to take my footage of the river. And it was probably around 72 cumex when I uh, captured my footage that I'm about to show you. And the reason I did that is because I could see that there was all this rain on the way. I knew the rivers were going to come up to, you know, a few hundred cumex for sure. And I figured if I waited till after that, I might be able to get some footage while it's on the drop. But I knew that the footage I'd capture would be with the river way higher than it's going to be on race day. So if I was filming right now, it'd be 100 cumex. And I think it's going to be... You know a lot lower than that on race day. I didn't think it was going to be 40 cumex so I kind of waited till this little top up and then I thought right let's capture some footage. So what you're about to see is going to be Saturday February 4th so seven days prior to your race on the river. Uh, so we're looking in pretty good shape right now obviously 100 cumex and dropping it's it's going to be a sweet flow um, for coast to coast you know it's it's going to be right in that zone and Hopefully, uh, this video will give a pretty good indication of what to expect on the river. If it's around 72 cumex, you know, then this will be perfect. But if it's a little lower, a little higher, well, we just have to, have to wait and see. Hopefully, this video is still useful. Looking at the, the weather um, outlook, just going to refresh this map for us. So looking at like the five-day rain forecast and like the Waimak River right in the middle of the South Island here, scrolling across in time this is exactly what you want to see a massive high right over the country on friday so no more rain coming the flow is just going to be steadily dropping and then by saturday you can see that high pressure still over the country and uh, and we should get the race done before this weather out to the west of new zealand um, arrives onto the south island so looking at that i would um, expect for the river uh, good conditions sunny but i would say that you're likely to experience a headwind um, in the second half of the river so leave some energy in the tank for um, pushing against that headwind and keeping your kayak online when when those gusts are pushing against you it's not going to be crazy strong but you're just going to experience that headwind that we all uh we all love <laughs> so uh, let's move across uh, to looking at the river so here we are in my kayak um, on Saturday, seven days before the race. Again, about 72 cumex on this day. Hopefully fairly representative of what you're going to find um, at Coast to Coast. Without further ado, we're into it. This is Rock Garden number one, about seven kilometers into the race course. It's the first like decent grade two rapid. And the line here is to start left. And, uh, and then we're going to be moving right, about midway down the rapid. There's some flow coming in from the right side, which is why I'm starting left, just to make it easier there through the waves. And then after that first little wave train, I want to cut across the flat water, over this little shallow gravel bar, get myself into that right-hand channel, and actually all the way on that right-hand side of it. And the reason for that is if you look left, all that water spills over a really rocky gravel bar. You don't want to be there. Where I am right now is perfect. Just on the right edge of this wave train. The kayak pointing straight downstream. 
keep the gas on. As you finish that wave train, definitely don't switch off because the actual rock garden is right in front of you now and there are a couple of big rocks that you want to be aware of. There's one to my left now and there's one to my right which you want to see well in advance and get well left of, of that rock sticking up there. Perfect. That's rock garden one. Rock garden two. Um, this one has been super interesting this year. It's been really, really low at 40 QMX. I was asking people to walk around this, but at 70 QMX, the line is totally possible. It's probably one of the harder rapids of the race course. And, uh, and the line I like is to start center with my nose pointing slightly right. You do have a right hand bend to come around after this big wave train and it's nice to have the kayak already pointing slightly right. The guy behind me is pointing slightly left and he's now having to um, manage himself in some bigger waves, which I am, uh, which I'm not. Immediately after Rock Garden 2, I would get all the way river left for the fastest line. The river splits into two channels here. You absolutely can be on the far right side and some would argue that's a safer, more conservative move. Uh, but what happens eventually on that right side, as you can see it there, it gets quite wide and shallow and you have to dodge rocks. Um, so it's slower and more chance of cracking the kayak. So I like to be in this left hand channel for Rock Garden 3, staying right of the waves, staying right of the rocks, just stay that right the whole way and you can aim straight when you're at the bottom. And we're skipping all the way to 27 kilometers, Esk Bend, we're in the gorge now, we're dropping into the main, main part of the gorge. This rapid, I think, is a lot easier this year than it has been in the past. There, are, there have been a couple of big floods and they've like flattened out this whole stretch. There's a lot less gradient in the entrance, so it's a whole lot easier to hang out on this left side as you enter the corner. The river just doesn't pull you right as much like it has in previous years. If you've done the race before, you'll remember that this rapid typically is one of the harder ones. Um, however, this year you're in luck. If you just stay left like I'm doing now, you can just hang out in the flat water and then be aware that as we get to the end of the bend, there are gonna be these three big boulders. I can just start to make out the white water on those boulders now on that left hand bank. You definitely don't want to hit those. Uh, you want to be moving to the center. Here are the rocks on my left now, three of them. You want to be in the center of the river as you go past these rocks. Now Salmon Rapid, probably the bounciest wave train. However, if you move right, aim the kayak straight down the side of the waves there, parallel to the flow, left blade in the waves, right blade on the eddy line, Keep that power on, perfect. 31.5 kilometers, you're into the Mannering Cliffs and then into the Carrington Gorge. This is like epic cliff walls. What you're gonna do is stay left around the corner. And this means that you're just gonna be in an easy position when you get around this bend you're gonna be in the sl slightly slower water for sure, but it's just a lot smoother. So you're not gonna to have to um, you know, manage your balance while you're getting bounced in those waves on the outside of the corner. So I like to be here um, with my clients. It's just a whole lot easier, like right through this stage here, being in the smooth water, so much easier than being bounced all around in those big waves. Once I'm past those waves, I'm gonna cut across the river to the right pretty aggressively. So I've got the kayak pointing like 45 degrees cross current, I'm driving all the way to the right hand edge of the flow. And then just before it gets too shallow, I'm gonna straighten up a little bit, let the nose drop downstream. And I'm just gonna brush the edge of this wave train. Notice the boils to my right hand side. You don't wanna be in those. So in between the waves and the boils, perfect. As you enter this, gorge, the narrowest part of the Waimakariri Gorge. It's quite tempting to head right here into the flat water, um, 
But it's so much easier if you stick left against this rock wall here, as I'm doing. It's a little bit intimidating, but trust me, it's so much easier if you're left here. Soak it in. Enjoy the view. Don't forget to look up and take a big deep breath. 34.5 kilometers. Hamilton Rapids. This rapid is just the same as it's always been really. Staying left is going to provide you the less bouncy line. Uh, so the further you are left, the less bouncing around you're going to do. You can't be all the way left. There's a few rocks there that you can see. So be as far left as you can without hitting rocks for the easiest line. Remember there are photographers here though, so if you want the epic photo, uh, I would get a little bit further right and send that bow skyward. Okay, just after Hamilton Rapid, you have the Halfway Hut Rapids. These are some shoots that are new this summer and we've been portaging this a lot. Like most people walk this and I would suspect that Coast to Coast um, is going to have to make a decision about whether their competitors will even be allowed to paddle this rapid. So I wouldn't be surprised or annoyed if you're made to walk this. However, there is this shoot, and at today's flow, I feel like I could just scrape through in between these rocks. And I was being real careful there not to crack my boat. Um, these waves are quite bouncy here. It's shallow right now, and I, you just don't want to be upside down. You're going to hit rocks there or crack your boat. I mean, I don't love this rapid um, at all. So that's the left shoot. Uh, and then we've got the Vortex Mega Howler line, which is definitely above grade two. Uh, I would say experts only, for sure. Uh, I'm concentrating pretty hard to get this right. And this has been the scene of a lot of swims for, um, for people who have run it, really. And um, I don't know if I've seen anyone who isn't a kayak instructor um, do that well you know um, it's a lot harder than it looks I think um, and the consequences for getting it wrong are, um, are pretty bad so if you're thinking about running that because I made that look easy I would just say like if you thought that looked easy you you probably don't want to run that rapid like it's in a multi-sport kayak it's it's a lot harder than um, than anything else we've really ever done on the YMAC. As we come uh, past the Halfway Hut Rapids, you're going to be at Bluff Bluff. I like to be at, on the right hand side of this wave train as I come into the first bluff. And then these bluffs are like pretty straightforward. I'm just going to cruise around with the flow and, uh, and stick on the right hand side of the river. So coming around this first bluff, I want to get all the way right. And then I can just sneak the inside of the next corner. No worries. You really don't want to be left here. Uh, makes your life a lot harder if you're on the left over by that big big rock. At 40 kilometers, you go um, you go past Walker Hut, and then you've got Wu Tang Slam, which is a tricky rapid. Involves threading the needle in between a boil and the wave train. To be fair, I'm a little bit further left than I would suggest. Maybe a boat width more to the right if you have that level of control is going to give you a slightly faster line. At 49 kilometers, horseshoe bend. New this year, I like to start left, aim the nose right, and then keep my weight slightly forward on my seat as I bounce through the waves. After you've done that, just a little bit downstream, the next thing you've got to deal with is this big convergence, big seam line that line of white water. If you're not really confident with that, I would just sneak it on the far right like I'm doing now. Make sure you lift your left edge or left rail so that you don't get tripped over. At 51 kilometers, you've got Deerprint Cove. I've been cutting this one through the eddy. There's quite a strong push and it makes you want to spin out or eddy out if you've experienced that. So you definitely um, don't want to use your left rudder as you go around this corner. If anything, like Use your right rudder as you turn left, which I know can be pretty mind-blowing um, for people. So through the eddy is the way to go. And then you're at, uh, at, at Woodstock. You've got 15k to go. At Woodstock this year, there's quite a strong um, boily eddy here. So you can sneak it around the inside for sure, but 
but I like the pure line with the flow around behind the boils, keeping that gas on. The boat I'm in, if you're interested, is the Flow Aspire. Uh, I'm paddling with a Gara Odin S. Um, I've got a new spray skirt this year, which has a pocket for food on it from Razdex, which I quite like. And, um, and yeah, that's it. I mean, please share this video around. I want as many people as possible to have good lines um, on the river this year at Coast to Coast. Um, so really, um, really just encourage people to watch that a few times, share it with their mates that are doing Coast to Coast. And if you know someone that is thinking about doing the Coast to Coast in the next year or two, uh, then definitely send them our way, get them on the river, doing their grade two certificate course as, as soon as possible, really. We have dates available now, so get into it. Um, the grade two certificates are valid for two years, so get it sorted now and you'll know that you're, um, you're going to be paddling well by the time Coast to Coast 2024 uh, rolls around or even 2025. So um, I look forward to seeing you all out there and uh, stay safe, have good lines on the river and, and enjoy the kayaking leg uh, this February.